yeah, yeah. most of, well it seems most of them it was mixing yeah let's say about Mix. weight 50 50 most of them it was some professor as well there's some student in it perfect perfect okay well i will go through relatively quickly to keep you all interested <clears throat> So first, something about myself. Um, I originally have a biology degree from the University of Nottingham in the UK. I started my publishing career at Elsevier in a life science department and then moved to the uh, pharmaceutical industry uh, to advise them on publishing their clinical trial papers. And I've been at the ICE, the Institution of Civil Engineers, in London, UK for 15 years. This is the IC building in central London. You can see Big Ben in the background there on the left. And this is my a, a photo I took on my commute to work. So uh, not every day looks like this, but you can see the IC building on the left and Big Ben covered in scaffolding as they are, they are cleaning the stone at the moment so if you were to come to London as a tourist you might be a little bit disappointed at the present time. This is the Great Hall of the ICE. Um, you can see that people if they have 200 to 300 guests can hire it to uh, get married in, in there. And um, the ICE is uh, 200 years old, it has 95,000 members worldwide, 20% are based outside the UK, so it is an international organisation. The ICE's journals are, are more international than the ICE itself, and that's why we're talking to you today. Uh, it's a chartering body, so people take an exam and then they, they get M-I-C-E after their name. And it's also a, a charity, so all of the uh, the money that IC Publishing earns, we give that to the ICE um, at, under UK tax rules. So we give 100% of our revenue to the ICE. You can become a student member of the IC for free. Um, this doesn't require an exam, and if you type um, IC benefits into your search browser. Uh, you can find this web page, and there's a nice tick list, tick box uh, table there of, of what students get. Um, and you can see everything that IC offers the international community. We have content going back a, a very long time. So, this is the original technical drawing of St. Paul's Cathedral in central London, and that's something that's in the ICE's archive. And this is a, a photo I took of the ICE publishing office um, before, before lockdown and we all moved to home working. So from the very old of the technical drawing of St Paul's to the modern. And this is my desk in front. You can see a, a TBM wallpaper on my computer. Um, so this picture gives you uh, an impression that the IC publishing team is um, relatively small. It's, it's 23 people. And so unlike some other publishers, if you send us an email, then you can be confident that someone on the other end will, will pick it up. Uh, we have um, a team, a dedicated team looking after each journal. And uh, I'm one of those people who it's easy to reach. Our content is on um, icvirtuallibrary.com and this is just a selection of, of some of our customers in the world. So this gives you a, uh, an impression that we have both university customers and also practitioner customers. So as you all know, civil engineering is an applied subject and as well as universities like your own, we will have things like um, London Underground as a customer, but also um, Arup, Acom, those, those big contractors and consultants worldwide um, partnering with uh, the research community. And um, 
I thought I'd take a moment here to talk about the ASCE, the American Society of Civil Engineers. Um, you may well be familiar with the ASCE, and they produce a reputable journals program. The, um, the, the difference between ICE and ASCE is that you, you might get a different geographic distribution of, of readers if you publish with, with us. So um, you can see on this heat map of worldwide usage that as well as Europe, which you might assume our journals cover, um, in recent years, we've successfully added the USA and Asia Pacific countries to, to our readership list as well as South America. So that's what I meant when I said earlier that we're an international journal publisher. So for those um, earlier career researchers listening, I thought I'd, I'd pick out a few journals to illustrate examples of the difference between different titles. Here are 30 journals in civil and environmental engineering. And then here, oh, so I picked out five of them. These are our um, more frequent titles. So if you're a, a geotechnical engineer, you might have heard of geotechnique. If you work in structures, you might have heard of structures and buildings. Then um, our concrete journal on the bottom left is also uh, quite a big one for us. And complementing the 30 engineering titles, we have five in materials science, which is shown here. So the librarians listening might, or, or, or indeed all of you might have questions about open access. And I'm very happy to, to help to answer those today. In, in brief, we have 34 journals that are uh, use a subscription model. So those journals have an open access option. And then we have a 35th of the 35 journals, which is only open access, so what they call gold open access. And um, Elice and I can, can expand upon these uh, subjects as you would like. In, in summary, um, the if you want to choose to take up the option to, to publish open access, then we have different um, APCs, article publication charges. So to be fair, we've decided to, to have tiers of open access cost. And if you want to publish in one of our biggest journals, then it's a slightly higher price and then a, a slightly lower price for um, a, uh, a journal that's not one of our largest titles. But we'd be very happy to, um, to we have a web page goes into more detail on this, which we can. What I'll do is I'll continue, but perhaps if we could pass the message to um to me, that's great. Uh, so in, in the UK and Northern Europe, Plan S is a hot topic, and that is a, a, a pro moving to gold open access movement. And I see publishing journals are compliance with, with Plan S, the, the rules of Plan S. So if you, um, your research funder or your uh, institution have signed to this open access pledge, then um, we are compliant through having a, a, what we call a zero month embargo period. So this allows we're compliant because we allow our authors to put their accepted manuscript um, in a, a repository of their employer um, with no delay. But overall, uh, open access isn't a huge topic at IC Publishing because we have um, a, a relatively small number of APCs per year, uh, only 50. Um, and, and so there's a, a low to medium author demand for that uh, publication option. 
So I thought I'd talk about how to get published by taking some examples um, of, of, of journals. Um, if you are earlier in your career um, and you're thinking about where to publish your research paper, then um, it, re surveys that are done of the author community um, usually come up with this, this ranking order that um, despite how much is talked about impact factor, it, it's recommendation by a colleague, um, which is the way that people um, primarily choose their, their journal to submit to. Impact factor is, is a debated um, value and um, your institution may well um, require that a journal you submit to has an impact factor. This, this graph shows the, the skewed nature of citations to journals, which decides impact factor value. So while impact factor is an average, because it, because it is an average, there is a variance in that, in that value. So um, what we can see here, this, uh, the citations to this journal, this is a real life example, but that the impact factor of this journal in this, this specific year was decided by actually only three papers of, uh, of the, um, the volume year that the journal published. And then you can see this long tail of, of less highly cited papers. And that's quite typical. This skewed distribution of citation is, is quite typical for um, any journal volume. So uh, taking examples to, um, to show you that journals vary, the IC's member journal is called Civil Engineering, and this is a, a very applied journal. It publishes project papers. It also has an impact factor, um, but its, its focus is on being useful to practitioners, and it has an acceptance rate of 70% and then an average time to acceptance of four months. And here's an example project paper. So this is a, a typical cover of civil engineering. Um, it's uh, accessible applied work. Geotechnique is, is different in that it's a research focused journal. It's one of our oldest, it's over 70 years old. And um, this journal, because it receives so many papers a year, has a lower acceptance rate, less than 30%. So you can see straight away that these two journals differ in their personality. Because its peer review is so rigorous, it has a longer average time to acceptance of, um, of nine months. But after that, uh, the IC publishing team put accepted papers online um, quicker than that, within uh, 40 days. This is uh, a, a younger journal that ICE publishes and um, impact factor is, a, a, is an accreditation that has to be applied for. So this journal, I'm showing you here through this example, that this journal, because it's new, it doesn't have an impact factor yet, but you can see focusing on smart construction that it's on a, a hot topic that we think is going to be a growing one. And um, this calls for papers that the journal is showing on digital twins, is an illustration of one of those hot topics uh, that it's doing themed issues on. This is the 35th journal I, I picked out earlier, uh, which is 100% open access. So again, I'm showing you examples of the difference between journals. This journal uh, doesn't have an impact factor because it's also relatively new, but in terms of open access, it's in the key indices that you would expect an open access journal to be in. So D, if you're a librarian, then you might want to look at uh, DOAJ as a resource of, of reputable open access journals. That's the directory of open access journals. Um, Go away is China's big open access index. And um, this journal, even though authors pay to publish in it, they pay a, a, an APC, it has to be selective. Uh, so this journal has a 50% rejection rate and then a, a lower APC value of £1,000. 
and we've settled on one thousand pounds by looking at um, other journals and uh, and benchmarking its value. So talking about impact factor, though it's a, a debated um, metric, uh, this this bar chart summarizes IC publishing journals um, that eighteen have an impact factor. So those would be our more research focused journals because Web of Sciences is a research index. We have another group that are considering applying to, for an impact factor, but because uh, they're practice focused, um, they might not qualify. And then we have a, a third group which are very, very practice focused. So, for example, our journal Bridge Engineering will probably not ever achieve uh, an impact factor. And, and that wouldn't be appropriate for it because it's not a research journal, it's, it's uh, very uh, applied. And then the other main index that people talk about worldwide is Scopus, produced by Elsevier. So uh, you can see from the first bar that um, nearly all of our IC publishing journals are in Scopus. You might know that through uh, its different product, Engineering Village, but they're all part of the same family of, of indices. So the point I'm trying to make is that not all journals are the same. If you're earlier in your career and you're trying to choose where to submit to, um, some journals are very slow, some journals are very niche, some are new. Um, so what we recommend is that uh, we talk about two different types of impact, real world impact, and impact factor. And if you want to achieve impact, then, then my advice is to choose a journal with a readership where you know that your peers are going to find your paper. So uh, when international conferences resume and you go to a, to a conference to talk about your work, you'd want people at that conference to have, to have read the journal that you publish in and found your work. And that's how that you can create impact upon others. I thought uh, I'd share some tips about what journal editors look for. And um, I'm sure that the, the professor after my talk will also um, be able to share tips about um, how to successfully navigate peer review. But typically we're talking about topic, technical content and the presentation of the article. So for topic, uh, it does come across if you are enthusiastic about your work. Um, for technical content and accuracy, <clears throat> if it is offered to you, then do take advantage of internal department review before you submit your paper. That will always add value to your, to your text. And then for presentation, uh, as well as um, good written English to help your peer reviewers um, understand your work and high quality uh, figures. Um, then if you're um, less confident about your written English or your department doesn't offer what they sometimes describe as native language check, then IC Publishing also offers a, an editing service and that's um, produced by, provided by Charlesworth Group. So if you want to use a, um, a reputable language editing service, then go to our authors page on the IC Virtual Library and you can find out about that. If you have submitted your work um, and you haven't heard anything um, back from a journal for, for a long time, then um, it's okay to ask for an extension to, to resubmit a paper. Um, it's also okay to ask a, a journal uh, for an update. Um, if you're resubmitting your work, then we, we do ask authors to include a covering letter. The, the reason for that covering letter uh, and saying how you've addressed peer review comments is that if you imagine a a very busy professor at the other end who has a stack of papers on their desk and they have an afternoon to clear their, their journal work, 
then you'll want to make your paper as quick as possible for them to read and to see what changes you've made. <clears throat> so if you have a covering letter, then they can quickly read that and, and get a summary for the changes. They don't need to use track changes. They can um, make it a, a second or a third decision on your paper, hopefully relatively quickly, and then move on to the next one in there, the big pile that they, they have to do um, for their work. It's okay to ask uh, any publisher, um, my team, um, when you will receive your proofs. Um, many publishers give only 48 hours for this, but that's not a, a strict deadline. So please don't feel that you have to rush back your, your proof checking. It's simply that uh, publishers worry about papers getting stuck and then um, they worry about forgetting about papers, papers ending up um, between an author and the publisher. Uh, and, and obviously we want to take your work to um, its final publication without uh, hiccups. And um, then uh, most publishers publish work with a DOI. Um, so once, once you receive your DOI, you can begin telling your peers about your work. So um, do, do self-promote uh, if you can use social media or um, tell your colleagues in your department, then it's much more likely that you're going to get your work cited and used. And um, some of IC Publishing's highest impact factor journals are actually run by editors who aren't shy about telling their peers and, and colleagues and friends about interesting new work. Um, figures are a, uh, uh, can be a, a hurdle to, to publishing quickly. And a common um, problem that, that I hear that comes across my desk and I see publishing is that um, figures that, uh, so we will ask an author for high quality figures. And um, a, a common problem that arises is that the person that has the high quality files might have left a research group or it will be on a, a different computer. Uh, and this does happen relatively often. So when you submit your, your paper, do you try and get um, the original versions of figures on, on a shared drive? And that will make um, your revisions of your article and getting published more easy. So what any publisher will want is uh, the original file used to create an image and, and to avoid pasting images into Microsoft Word. Here are some examples of, of um, uh, what, what can go wrong. So a common file format is .eps, and this is a file format that use, uses vectors. It's very good for line drawings. Um, but if you have created your figure in a different format, and then saved it, save as to EPS, then when we look at it at IC Publishing, it will appear like the image in the top right. A good rule of thumb for, uh, for photos, which are often in, in JPEG format, is that we'd want them to be larger than one megabyte in size. And you can see the difference in clarity between the bottom left and the bottom right images. Uh, DPI is um, dots per inch or, or the number of pixels in an image and publishers will ask for um, 600 DPI at a width of 10 centimeters or um, for photos they'll say they might want it at 1200 pixels wide. For line drawings they might say 2400 pixels wide and, and that's the difference between a nice sharp image like the one in the top left. And then um, the top right is what happens at lower resolutions. And so if you've spent a long time writing your article and preparing its figures, then as publisher, we want it to look as good as possible in the final version. And, uh, and that's why we'll ask you for high quality figure files. 
The bottom um, relates to colour. And so if a journal is printed and it's printed in black and white, then that's something that you'll need to, to think about um, when you prepare your figures. As, as I'm talking to a civil and environmental engineering audience, I thought I'd tell you about some hot topics that come across my desk. I mentioned digital twins earlier. Uh, Biogeo biogeotechnics is a, another hot topic in the geotechnics field. Um, clim the climate change challenge is um, a growing area of interest. Um, it's something that is often mentioned from uh, by South American based authors. So building a city for a growing population or uh, protecting cities from flooding and coastal erosion are hot topics um, in the IC publishing office. And then also clean energy. So um, in the UK's case, that's offshore wind farms, but in other parts of the world, that will be um, hydropower or solar, uh, et cetera. And so it might be that um, when you progress in your career, you're, you're giving your government advice on value for money um, for uh, civil engineering projects, addressing some of these issues. So that was my prepared um, slide presentation. Um, I, I, as I said earlier, I'm, I'm delighted that um, Professor Al Jabri could join us today. He's a published author with Advances in Cement Research and Structures and Buildings, I see publishing journals. Uh, I've, I've put a recent paper of his at the bottom. And um, I think that now we're going to move from a, a presentation format to a, a questions and answers session. Uh, so there's an opportunity for people listening to, to ask myself or um, Elice or the professor questions about um, all the things that are, are talked about in your department. So that might be open access or where to publish or how to uh, navigate peer review. So. Um, I look forward to your questions. <clears throat> yes, can I just add something? So thank you, Ben. Thank you. Um, yes, so Munir Hisham, I, I think you may receive um, some questions in in um, in, the, in your chat. Uh, so in written, uh, in writing yeah, by you. Yes. yes. Yeah. Anyone have a question, please? They must be raised their hand or just might be writing their question in it. I'm happy to answer to them. While we're waiting for some for people to think about those and to type some of those questions in, um, I'd like to, to ask the professor. Uh, professor, are you uh, unmuted? Can you talk? Uh, yes, Ben, I am here. Uh, Excellent. Yes. Excellent. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you very much, and I am very delighted to be with you today to share my experience with the audience. I, so, um, to, to talk about your experience, um, starting off um, it, a, a, a paper publishing career, it can be quite uh, a, a scary thing. Um, do, do you remember? Um, the the first paper that you published and whether it was a positive experience or or a challenging experience um, actually at the beginning um, <clears throat> when you are a new graduate and uh, you don't have experience in uh, in research the publishing um, um, a research article in a good journal is like a challenge so, um, uh, with lack of the experience, um, it is difficult to figure out what is the requirements, what is the exact uh, requirements that yes. each each journal is uh, uh, is requiring, um, and therefore you need to have also with you uh, at the beginning a good mentor so that he can or she can guide you to the uh, right and correct uh, way. Uh, actually, during my PhD study, I 
benefited a lot from my uh, PhD supervisor. Uh, he was an excellent supervisor. He used to tell us, please go and write the paper. And we, we used to write the paper and then we used to send him the uh, draft uh, of the paper. And he used to uh, meet with us and discuss with us what is the requirement, what is the good and what is the bad. And from this, uh, from this experience, I, I actually I learned a lot on how to write uh, your paper in a good scientific manner. And um, if I'm correct, that was in the UK, your PhD? That was in the UK, yes. Uh, I graduated from Sheffield University in, uh, in 2000. And I was uh, working with Professor uh, Ian Burgess on the behavior of connections in, in, in fire. So actually, this research was very good research. It was it formed, it formed the fundamentals uh, for understanding the behavior of connections in fire and also for the development of what we call the uh, component based method for the design of um, uh, of connections, uh, steel connections at elevated temperature. And I remember in one, the first uh, article we published was in the Journal of Construction, uh, Constructional Steel Research, uh, which is um, one of the, uh, of course, one of the uh, most uh, popular journals in, uh, in steel structures. Yes, I, I, you chose quite a cold part of the UK to go and study. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, indeed. Yes, <laughs> it was a good. It, uh, it was a good experience, actually. <laughs> of course, with experience, um, uh, when you write your paper, you understand what is the requirement and you understand what is the uh, novelty uh, in your paper. If you want to publish your paper in a good journal. Uh, your paper should have some novelty in it. This is the first requirement. Uh, I, I am now a reviewer in more than 47 journals. So when I read any article, I look first at the novelty. What is the novelty behind doing this work? Is there any novel idea? Or is there anything in you that will be contributed to the, uh, to the field? This is the most important thing that the uh, researcher should uh, should look uh, for. And the second thing that the uh, technical content, that the technical content, you need to make sure that the technical content is enough for the publication in a good journal. Uh, the third is the language, that your article should be written in a good, uh, strong English, uh, and you need to make sure that your article is free of any spelling, uh, grammatical mistakes. It's written in a good English. The formatting should be also uh, good. Your paper also should include all the elements that's needed for a scientific uh, paper. Your discussion of results also should be um, uh, in details, you need to have uh, a detailed, thorough, uh, deep discussion of your uh, results. As well as your tables and figures should be clear and concise. You need to avoid any uh, repetition, for example, or repetition of any uh, uh, figures or tables as well as the figures should be, as you mentioned, should be clear for the readers so that they, um, they understand what's the, uh, what's the significance behind uh, these, these figures as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, so I thought I would take the, the moment to check. Um, do we have any submitted questions or shall we continue talking about common things that we see. Are there any questions written from the people listening? Uh, actually, until now, we don't have anything. It, yes. it, 
in that case, I'd like to ask um, what what are the um, the hot topics or, or the the concerns? Um, we find that people talk about have different publishing journal concerns in different parts of the world. Um, what what is um, talked about most often in Oman at the current time? Is it um, quality or, or slow journals being slow or, or open access? Um, would you like to? Can we help you with a, a publishing question today? <clears throat> the, so the the I mean it would be wonderful if the librarians in Oman were happy. Uh, it sounds like it sounds like mostly that you are happy with the um, the journals that you receive. If, if that's the case, then. Um, then I wanted to turn back to the um, the professor so in this this final questions and answers session today. Um, uh, professor, you mentioned things that you um, look out for: novelty, technical quality, and, and language. Um, from from a, um, a civil engineering point of view, what are the some of the common mistakes that when you're when you, as you say, you're peer reviewing for, for 40 or, or more journals. What are the most common mistakes that you see um, uh, in peer review? Also, some of the uh, common mistakes and also the uh, writer should should look uh, or should avoid. Um, um, this, is the, this is one of the important issues as well. Uh, it, you need to avoid any sort of uh, plagiarism. Uh, plagiarism is a very uh, serious issue. Yes. Uh, uh, nowadays, plagiarism can be spotted uh, uh, very easily, either by the journal itself or by the uh, reviewer. So through the, um, uh, when you check your, you need to check your paper before submitting it for any similarity uh, rate. And therefore, to avoid any plagiarism, you need to make sure that you cite uh, all the references that you have used in your manuscript. If you get like a new idea or a new quote or something, you need to uh, to refer where you get this information from. So you need to pay special attention to this part part of uh, the plagiarism. This is very important. Also, you need to check the similarity rate. Each journal has a slightly different similarity rates. Some journals, they have similarity rate of uh, like uh, the, uh, in the paper, the similarity rate should not exceed, for example, 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it will be rejected automatically. So you need to take, before submitting your paper, you need to make sure that uh, there is no plagiarism. Uh, the similarity rate is within the uh, acceptable limit by the journal. And also you need to prepare your journal according to the journal's format. Sometimes uh, you write the paper and you send it, but you, you don't focus or you don't concentrate on the journal uh format and therefore um each journal uh, it has its own uh, format and therefore you need to prepare your paper according to the uh, to the journal's uh, format as well yes that can, that can be links or um some journals have a very very um, specific structure for the abstracts that's needed Something that I've seen that is uh, I've seen more often recently is journals asking for an impact statement to to for authors to say how they. Uh, yes. Also, I need to point one important issue. And nowadays, there is a lot of open access journals, but we need to differ to differentiate between the, op the open access journals that are. Uh, published 
by a good uh, reputable um, organization like, for example, ICE, like Elsevier, and those journals, which are called predatory journals. Uh, there is a huge difference between the open access journals, which are published by uh, these well-recognized and well-known uh, organizations, and those uh, predatory journals where they can publish any kind of, uh, of articles. Some articles are nonsense, and they get published. Uh, one day I was looking for a reference, and I found one paper in concrete behavior of concrete made with such and such material and it was published in a journal uh, veterinary and animal science journal and when i looked i was surprised i went to the journal's website and i found yes that's true this paper has been published there and at the end i found this is a predatory journal where it it publish uh, everything. So we need to be careful also. We need to distinguish between open access journals, whether this is this journal is really uh, belongs to a good uh, organization or this is a predatory journal where you pay uh, some amount of money and your paper will be published within two weeks. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, researchers will yeah. be receiving lots and lots of spam emails um from from such journals uh, offering exactly yeah, yeah. yes yeah, i used to actually, receive i think yeah. every week when one of these yeah. uh, emails uh dr uh, brother khaliba thank you very much uh, we are honored to have you today but i have thank other one question back to the similarity rate okay for acceptance so there are some people they say or some researchers they say they might be they exceed up to some journal they accept up to like 35 or 40 percent of similarity rate so any kind that one will be you can more clarify about that one about the percentage of acceptance of the article so yes, some of them they say see. between 20 to 50 sometimes to 40. so this one kind of yes. question might be have it from the research yes as i as i said it depends on the uh uh on the in the journal itself uh, some but most of the journals good journals they don't uh, uh, exceed more than 20 percent a similarity rate i think 35 or 40 percent or 50 percent is a high uh, similar uh, similarity rate um, but for good journals uh, similar similarity rate should not exceed um, uh, maximum of 20 percent Well, uh, I have also to continue that one, my, my notes or our opinion. Do you think this, this one open access that one also affecting the rate? So that will increase the rate nowadays? Mm -hmm. Because you know, now it was an internet days or like worldwide is very close. So this one might be affecting to the increase the rate. So you think that one might be also an issue? Do you think? Um, uh, it might be, yes, it might be. Because nowadays we have so many, so many uh, these journals, which are called predat predatory journals. These journals, <laughs> even they don't, they don't care about the similarity rate. You write anything, and your your work will get will get published. Um, uh, and unfortunately, some of these are now they started to also to subscribe in uh, in, in Scopus platform so this also will uh, will have i think a great impact i think negative impact on the on the research uh, field okay thank you for that yeah i have question over here rising by mawia hussein i believe he mm -hmm. said concerning proof reading what are the limits that can be made in improving the paper yes yes from I, yes, please allow me to answer that. Um, I saw that pop up. So thank you very much for, uh, it's a good question. Thank you very much for typing it in. Um, the, to, so 
some of the uh, some of the larger journal publishers, um, if you imagine they are so Taylor and Francis, Sage, Elsevier, uh, Wiley, um, the large, very large publishing houses. You can imagine they them as a huge, a huge factory producing thousands and thousands of of papers, and um, quite often at at a larger so what I call a factory scale, then um, the copy editing and proofreading that um, a paper will experience might well actually be from a um, AI software program. So um, when I was at Elsevier, they were starting to introduce a, um, a, a copy editing software program, which would help the editors. Um, and so sometimes your text will be put through an algorithm uh, and, and then you have to carefully read your proofs to, to see the level of, of improvement that's happened. Um, I, I started today by saying that I see publishing as a, a smaller publisher. We have 35 journals. And so um, we do use uh, humans. We use human copy editors and proofreaders. And the advice that we give for, for two authors is that the copy editor and proofreader, they will be a professional person. They will do copy editing and proofreading five days of every week, and they will be used to improving grammar and um, spelling and um, sentences, sentences that make sense. Um, but what they, they won't be is they won't be an engineer and they won't be an engineer expert in your, your area. So the, the limit, to answer your question, the limits that, that uh, a human copy editor or proof reader will have will be that engineering um, terminology. And so that they are, we ask our copy editors and proof readers to not change um anything that they don't understand or to to not to try and keep the author's voice and and to improve um the flow of the text in written english so i think you will see your um, text improve but as i mentioned halfway through my presentation uh, if you have a internal review at your department um, sometimes they call it native language check, then, then take advantage of that because you've spent months, years and months doing your research and then you want to, to make sure that your paper looks as good as it can do. Okay, well, I think we're, we're just coming up to the hour now, uh, Munir. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's almost we close two hours. Yeah. So, any question, anything might be probably might be to be to share anything you would like to share anything. Can it or just you like to be by your voice, right? sharing by your voice? Um, yes, I think um, also the uh, if you want to publish the. Uh, uh, the publishing is not restricted to academics or researchers. Also, practicing engineers they can uh, publish in the um, in, in ICE. Uh, ICE has um, uh, the uh, journals that cover all fields of uh, of civil engineering. So, if you have, for example, a good uh, material for publication, like uh, case study, for example, which is unique or you have uh, a project that was executed in an innovative manner, you can write uh, an article and you can send it to, uh, to ICE for publication. So the publication is not res res restricted to the academic uh, field, but also to the uh, practicing engineers and to the, those engineers who are working in the industry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think just I need to be like a 
even with all audience, if you hear me, our guest, you have any question, anything to be right, we'd be more happy to answer your question or your doubt. Maybe, uh, hi, I, I, I would like to just ask a, a simple question to, uh, to uh, Professor Al Jabri. How did you come across um, ICE publishing uh, back a, back a few, a few years ago? How did you come across and how did, uh, what did actually, you, did you, <laughs> please? Actually, my relationship with ICE goes back to 1992, when I graduated from, from Sultan Qaboos University. Uh, I joined ICE as a graduate member. So uh -huh. it is an old relationship. And then uh, in 2015, I was elected as fellow of the uh, of ICE, which is the highest grade. Uh -huh. And also I served as a reviewer in, uh, in some journals, I think in one or two journals of ICE. That's why I know ICE uh, well, and I know that the, to publish a paper in, the, in ICE is, uh, this means that your, uh, your work is of a really high quality. So mm -hmm. this is briefly my, uh, my relationship with, uh, with, with ICE and how I, I came across uh, ICE. Uh, okay, excellent, thank you, okay. We have a, one, one question from Mansoor Raja. For, he said, the quiz question, for the tire one journal, hi tire, what is the meaning of significant novel contribution? Uh, novel contribution means that um, uh, you have like a novel idea, like if you have a certain material, um, uh, you see in, uh, and for exa for example, we have one of the one of the articles which I was, which as I had published recently, that uh, we 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 try to to uh, to manufacture or we try to to have um, uh, to have a cementless paste. So um, this paste is uh, uh, is consisting of or the main constituent material in this space is not cement, but other materials. And we use uh, in, uh, as a material a nano clay. So this, uh, this type of work hasn't been uh, done elsewhere. And therefore, this is why what I mean by uh, novel uh, contribution or the significant uh, contribution to the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I hope that one was answering to Mr. Mansour. Well, yeah, we should almost be close one hour, but it seemed nothing was more question. So, yeah, unless you might be a... But there's one other question. You can take this one. Something uh, from Maui as well. You say, why the impact factor in social science and humanity is very low? compared to the scientific teams. Shall I, shall I answer that question? Yeah. Yes. Um, in, impacts factor is, is they use an equation and um, there's a, a good Wikipedia page on impacts factor. So if you want to learn more about it, you can, you can type that into Wikipedia. Um, impacts factor is based on the previous two years only. And so, if, it, if, a, if a, a field, a, a subject area uh, moves quite quickly, then there will be simply, there will be more citations in 24 months, that 24 month period. And if I, I'm generalizing here, social sciences moves uh, a bit more slowly than um, medicine and, and life science and chemistry. So you will see higher impact factors um, in, in those fast moving fields, but then you will want to compare like with like. So you will want to compare a social science journal with another social science journal.
I hope that went clear for Mr. Maui and the rest of the guests. All right. I think it might be Alice. What? Yeah, you might be in the session. Might be. It is a good idea, Alice. Or you yes. Do you have something to be add? You're on yes. your side then, or Brock Khalif, anything you might be at, or might be ended the session right now. Uh, um, I only need to say thank you very much for for your time today. It's thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, thank you very much for you for your invitation, yeah. and hope to uh, to be in touch with you again. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Professor. And yes, I would add, of course, that if you if any of the participants have more questions. Um, uh, either later today or in the next few days, you can write, of course, to uh, Masader, uh, Munir, Al Batashi, uh, or myself. Uh, you can ask for my email to uh, Masader, and you can, or, or Ben Ramster. You can get our emails from them. Um, and also, of course, if any of the participants already study at the Sultan Qaboos University, of course, uh, Professor Al Jabri is there. I imagine they can also maybe. Um, speak to, to him directly because he is the, indeed there in Muscat now. So um, of course, if, if anyone <laughs> wants any help, any advice, any question, uh, you, you are most welcome to contact me at any time. Good, uh, good. I'm very, I'm very pleased. Yes. Uh, we, it was important for us to have mm, with us today, of course, an Omani author. So it makes it easier if anyone, of course, wants to learn more, have a further discussion. Uh, that's, a, that's something easier for you to do. So I'm very pleased about that. Um, yes, so I think if there is any other question, we are still here later to answer them by email. Uh, so I think that's it for the moment. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, yes. thank you. I appreciate for Ben, for <laughs> Professor Khalifa. It's a very good example. You mentioned also, yeah, when Omani was there, Professor Khalifa proceed his guidance and his Different and con contribution, especially in the engineering field, as we know him very long time. And thank you for ICE, it's supportive for Masada to give this session for our guests, our member as well. Thank you, appreciate it so much. Yeah, we can end it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thanks thank welcome. you. Have a good day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye.